Hello, everyone, and welcome to our end of January webinar uh, for Wikisoft on Agile PPM and uh, Faith with Azure DevOps. Really, it's um, addressing uh, the scenarios of enterprise Agile with um, our one plan solution and Azure DevOps. So for those of you that have not um, worked with us previously, uh, we are Wikisoft, and we are a, a business transformation organization that provides advisory solutions and operations offerings. Um, as you can see, we run the gamut in terms of uh, providing uh, strategy and planning services, change management services for transformation initiatives that you might have. Our historical strength has been in our solutions and in productivity, where we have uh, done a lot of work in project portfolio management, um, the Microsoft stack, and, and now Azure, Intelligent Cloud, and our operations side, which is a fairly large part of our business where we do manage delivery, have a large staffing, uh, organization and can also provide uh, you know, training and support depending on your specific need. Uh, with respect to my practice, my name is Jose Levy and I'm the director of Agile PPM and Azure Solutions. And it's a it's an exciting time to be in this space because uh, the three the three areas that I'm showing um, you on the slide actually are feeding each other uh, at the current moment. Uh, there is a preference for CIOs to go to product-based uh, approaches for managing uh, software uh, development and, and software applications. Uh, there is an increase in the use of DevOps uh, in terms of you know having continuous integration and deployment. And finally, the power of the cloud and the speed at which the cloud is evolving is uh, providing more opportunity to enhance DevOps and also enhance uh, Agile. So uh, all three of these make for an interesting uh, set of capabilities within IT and the business. It's not only IT now, it's the business. Um, we want to go fast, we want to be integrated, and we want to use um, immediately available services to uh, deliver more business value to the organization. So all three of these um, are areas in which your organizations are going to have to focus on uh, in order to evolve and get to the next level. So the particular topic today is Agile, Enterprise Agile uh, PPM. And just to give you some market context, I'm presenting the Gartner hype cycle for Project Portfolio Manager for 2018. This is about six months old. But uh, I show it just to, to give you context and also to uh, show what your leadership teams are are uh, talking about and also consuming, because Gartner will issue this and um, leadership teams in business and IT will consume it and then come and ask, why aren't we doing this? So the, the interesting part is that the everything that's at the top of the, the cycle has to do with uh, enterprise agile frameworks it has to do with uh, business transformation offices, strategy realization office. That was a big topic last year at the Gardner PPM Summit in June. Um, you can see enterprise class agile development and um, application portfolio management. So we're getting to the point where inflection point where agile is now either at half or greater in organizations, in larger organizations that have been doing Agile for many years, and the ability to, to do portfolio management uh, with all the different pockets of Agile within organizations is now a priority. At the end of the day, we, we need to roll everything up, uh, either plan, plan down and then see results uh, bottom up from uh, the, all the teams that are, that are coming together. So we're gonna do our first poll, and poll has been launched. If you could please uh, let us know. 
another way of also seeing if uh, everyone's awake. <laughs> Give everybody about 30 seconds to go ahead and um, I was recently at a open group symposium at um, where you have different industry presenters and w was impressed that uh, a couple of the organizations had been uh, actually doing agile for for a very long time which we it, it's it's you know there there are out there uh, organizations were um, fortune 50 so it doesn't wouldn't doesn't surprise me um, but I will go ahead and close the polls. So results are fairly fairly consistent, um, you know, with what we've seen previously. Um, Seventy-five to eighty percent of organizations are using Agile overall. Uh, so you know we're within within that range, or actually higher than that range. Um, and um, we're in the shorter, this particular audience, we're in the shorter range in terms of the use of that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, that is um, quite uh, quite okay. So let's go to our, now to the topic of Enterprise Agile PPM. So we had SAFE as kind of an anchor um, in, in the webinar. And I'm showing here uh, the portfolio scale agile approach. Um, if you've been to the... Uh, scale Agile Framework site, you'll see that there's, you know, th there's three other um, approaches that you can use, and uh, in this particular case, we we've selected the portfolio uh, say tab, which has uh, the technical teams at the bottom um, doing Scrum Agile. You have Agile release teams at the program level, um, you know, multiple teams basically um, executing a program plan and, a, and program increments. And then finally, a portfolio at the top that's aligned to value streams, which don't want to get into the discussion of what that is and how we reflect that in organizations. That's a, a topic of this discussion itself. But the bottom line is that we have, we do have to roll up and um, see that uh, value is being uh, derived from and delivered from uh, all of the work that teams are executing using Agile uh, frameworks. Uh, and we we talk about safe here, but I just want to make sure that everybody understands. If you don't particularly like uh, safe, scale agile, and you have another another uh, style or another methodology, it's perfectly fine. Um, the point here is that we do have to get to a level where we are looking at a portfolio um, of uh, teams, roadmaps, applications, however way you want to view uh, the, the 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 deliverable. Uh, from your um, Scrum Agile teams, it has to be portfolio. And here we're, we're, we're seeing at the very, very top level with our lean portfolio management. Um, that's really what we're going. What, the, the problem we're trying to solve uh, with our with our one plan solution and our and our approach. So in order to in order to deliver enterprise agile, there's really four, you know, criteria in in many ways, there's four. We boiled it down to four. Uh, the first thing is that you have to integrate ex existing team solutions. So there might be folks, um, you know, using one of the plethora of tools for uh, doing agile um, planning, um, whether it's uh, you know Jira, Azure, Azure DevOps. There's many, many out there in the market, and within organizations, you might find you know pockets of folks using all these different tools. So if you want to get to the to the enterprise agile level you have to be able to bring them all together. So this is more of a solution integration um, challenge. And, and, you know, it brings the unique uh, challenge also in an organization of having an enterprise standard. So taxonomy has to be also um, consistent. We'll, we'll put that aside uh, for a separate conversation. Um, the second is executives want to really look at a portfolio-wide planning and tracking. So um, you have to accommodate you know what what we normally know as traditional project and, and uh, uh, portfolio management uh, techniques in the agile mode, and you know there's a specific uh, way of doing it. And I think, and we talked about you know the safe approach with uh, 
with value streams, but you know it doesn't necessarily need to be that way. Uh, and we'll show you an example of that with our one plan solution in DevOps. Uh, what um, what executives want also is, and in the, the perspective is to have all those product roadmaps defined and uh, viewed together. So that's another uh, criteria for defining um, what is ag enterprise agile. And then finally, you have to accommodate a, a, a framework, uh, whether it's save less, whichever one you want, uh, both from a you know process and taxonomy. So you, the, your solution has to be flexible to accommodate that particular one that your your organization chooses. Um, so those are you know some interesting criteria that you have to focus on. So from our perspective, the value that we want to bring to the table is you know, providing that agile portfolio management solution. And here we define, you know, what we're going to show, which is really, can we focus on, you know, product development investments uh, based on, on Scrum Agile? And um, can we provide that, the you know, what we all know as portfolio management, uh, financial management, which is the cost side and the benefit side, uh, resource management, um, the atomic unit of work with points, within a team for a scrum master and a product owner has to eventually uh, roll up so we can see what everyone is working in, both from a historical and forecast standpoint. Uh, you, we still have to report status even though we're, we're doing agile. Uh, in most organizations you're gonna find, probably in yours, that there's still a large uh, set of um, legacy waterfall projects or hybrid projects. So uh, we have to accommodate that also uh, within the solution for Enterprise Agile. And finally, as I said, and I'll come back to it in a minute, uh, one of the biggest value uh, drivers is integrating with DevOps uh, in operations, uh, you know, building in quality, building in test, so that um, your, your flowing uh, releases in and out as your teams are completing um, work so you know here's here's an example and uh, obviously there's it could be done in Excel uh, but it, in, a, in a very large enterprise how would you actually take in you know four different teams working in different iterations with different uh, time frames um, with epics and themes all over the place um, how do you exactly roll that up to have a um, a lean portfolio view. So that's really the challenge that we're, we're trying to attack um, with, uh, with this solution. So let's do a second poll, see if everyone's still with us. So what percentage of your projects use Agile methodologies right now? Polls are open. Right now, um, in some of the latest uh, industry uh, trends, the we're getting to um, you know between forty and fifty percent. So um, again, nothing wrong if you're either less or more in any of them. But, uh, you know, we're getting to an inflection point where, again, 50% of uh, projects are um, using Agile. So some interesting results. The majority of folks are less than 10%, which is fine. Uh, we do have a, a large group between, you know, 10 and 50. So, um, and, and there are some organizations in this um, here that are, you know, above 50. So. Congratulations to all of you. Um, again, it really depends on style, so there's nothing uh, nothing wrong um, either way. Go ahead and uh, continue. So I wanted to uh, emphasize DevOps and why we uh, wanted to bring to the table Azure DevOps. Uh, the the most value, you know, the the safe uh, graphic, the portfolio safe graphic has a lot of different components, a lot of different practices, steps, um, 
it's really a, a mashup of a lot of different things that uh, have been, um, you know, and some of them in existence for a while. Uh, you know, in the in the safe graphic, you'll see DevOps on the side, and um, it has, um, you know, at the end, and it's it's only one part of it, but it actually um, is one of the biggest drivers of value right now. And um, what you know, our customers um, are telling us that you know, they, in a way, underestimated uh, the importance of focusing on this. So uh, I would say that if your organization isn't right now uh, figuring out a way of doing DevOps in the true sense, and I know that it depends on IT operations. You're dependent on IT operations for this, so you know you might not even be in control. But the greatest value to the organization could be in uh, not only perfecting, um, you know, Scrum Agile practices. Uh, delivering portfolio, but also uh, integrating the DevOps. So um, something that we would encourage you to uh, to look at, you know, in terms of the value derived. And for that, um, you know, Microsoft did a huge release of what used to be VSDS. So we're we're prominently displaying it here because they've actually um, done a lot of investment. Uh, you know, shown uh, mostly by the acquisition of GitHub. But also the product itself evolved, um, and it has a lot of different components. And they're trying to support organizations through, um, uh, you know, Azure DevOps uh, and getting to that dream of having uh, um, a unified flow between uh, the the development of the product and the deployment of the product. So um, we're going to show our one plan solution within DevOps. Uh, we'll talk about. Another way of doing Agile, uh, Enterprise Agile next week without DevOps or with multiple tools, but the focus this for this webinar will be on Azure DevOps. There's a lot of information that Microsoft has on their websites on what uh, the product itself does, and again, it's pretty extensive now. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use all of it. Uh, at a very simple level, at a t teams can use Azure boards. Um, if you uh, Going through Azure Pipelines, that's where you'll be getting more into the DevOps uh, side of the house. Uh, so, I encourage you to look at it. Um, you know, our one of our offerings is uh, built uh, directly within DevOps, which we'll demonstrate uh, in a minute, so you can see how you can achieve um, enterprise agile with Azure DevOps. So I said Azure Boards is your, um, you know, primary Kanban board backlog and team dashboard uh, experience. Um, they've done a, you know, good job improving it, um, and suggest that you, um, at the very least, try it. I'm sure most organizations have an instance of uh, VSDS, um, so uh, you know this is how you would actually uh, interact. Um, with Azure Boards, again, one one of the components of what's called now Azure DevOps. So, how do we um, how do we intend to uh, deliver on the the problem set of uh, Enterprise Agile? So, we're going to what I have showing here is really our uh, one plan solution within DevOps. Uh, the focus is to provide capabilities for uh, portfolio management, enhanced planning, again, whether we're talking about um, value stream, uh, business case, um, a specific epic, uh, you'll see that you know you have the ability to uh, provide additional content um, around that, planning content around that. There's a financial side, so we have uh, the ability to you know, do cost and compare cost against actuals. And also uh, track business value, uh, which is really important. Uh, there's a resource management side, both at a individual resource and a team level. Uh, if we're again using um, Scrum Agile approaches, and then finally we want really uh, great visualizations and uh, insights for our executives so they can see uh, how all of the work uh, comes up into into one view. Uh, you might be in a situation also where you have other other solutions. So we the uh, we also have a, our One Connect platform, which is an integration platform for work management, and uh, it can bring 
also other data sets that might be um, in other systems, uh, you know, in the organization, whether it's uh, Jira, like you see, all the different brands. There's really no limit to that to the the solution. It's just a matter of how we're going to be doing the integration and uh, the mapping to the um, the taxonomy that's being used within within your particular uh, instance. So I will now turn it over to my colleague, Matthew Willey, who will um, go ahead and give us an overview. Perfect, thank you very much, Jose. Alrighty, so I'm logged here into Azure DevOps. Um, and right now, this should be a fairly familiar screen, although I've added in um, you know, some extra widgets here so you can see some other things. Um, but the short of it is, um, you know, we've added in a series of capabilities into the capabilities you may already be familiar with within Azure DevOps, as Jose was talking about. Um, so we'll go through a quick and a kind of process order of how this could work. So a lot of times, um, you know, when you're building out your backlogs, you're going to start at an epic type level. Now, we by no means require this structure. You know, you don't have to use the default structures that are here, and you can configure this to have, you know, different levels and or different names for things, depending on methodologies you're using and, and other reasons. Um, but the idea is at a very high level, I can define, you know, what I want to do. And these are kind of the buckets of value that we want to go and create, and we can do prioritization exercises and so on and so forth against these. Um, but at some point, um, you know, possibly before we even approve the development of these, there's some more information that we want to track. And natively in Azure DevOps, you don't have the capability of doing kind of top-down resource capacity planning as well as financial planning. And businesses, finance, accounting, um, you know, managers, et cetera, still require those things. So a lot of times people find themselves using either another tool altogether or Excel spreadsheets or a combination of things. And so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on uh, the One Plan tab here, which is going to launch um, some of the One Plan capabilities. And so right here on this epic, um, you know, as a say Scrum Master or product owner or whoever is responsible for coming in and doing some high-level resource planning and financial planning, I can come in and I can start to do that without having to go somewhere separate or try to make you know, separate spreadsheets and other things. So what I'm looking at here uh, is a high-level resource plan. So before we even approve this, um, you know, I'm going to need to pull a Scrum team or possibly multiple, in this case, multiple teams onto this uh, epic to be able to go and get it executed. And we have questions like, well, how long do you think you're going to need that team for or teams? Um, are those teams available? Or are they already scheduled to be working on other epics and, you know, other activities? Um, and so you can see here, I'm asking for two teams, team one and team three, but there are actually some issues here. So you can see there's some red. And what we're going to then have to do later on, when we'll, we'll look at this as an organization, is we can figure out, you know, where those problems are and how we're going to solve them. Maybe we need to bring another team online. Maybe we need to push out team three's activities uh, another quarter. They won't be able to start until then, which is going to push out the timeline and update our roadmap as a whole. We can start to do those types of activities. But before we can do that, we have to, you know, put some basic information in. Um, across the top, there's multiple different ways you can plan. You can plan using percents, which is what we're looking at here. Um, you can plan in FTEs. Uh, I'm doing very high-level team-type resource planning, but if you want, you can go down to even a named or generic skill set type of, of view where I want to see, you know, I need this many developers and this many QAs and this many, you know, so on and so forth. So there's kind of multiple ways you can set this up and doing it. Um, but up front, it could be as simple and as easy as this. Um, from there, um, we've set up rates behind the system, blended rates. So when you go to build your budget, we can first import in that resource plan, and based off of my blended rates, it's going to calculate out my labor costs for me, right? So I can see here over time, and you can look at this at varying levels of detail. Right now, I'm looking at it by month, uh, but if I wanted to, I could switch this by quarter or by year, you know, and look at it, you know, different periods of time, fiscal periods, if that's what you're trying to do, you know, so on and so forth. So that gives me my labor costs here, which roll up, and you can see um, I'm looking at about $418,000 of labor costs. From there, like very much like an Excel spreadsheet, I can come and I can key in other types of costs that I think I'm going to have. And what I'm essentially doing here is building out my budget. So we now know, okay, it's going to take $577,000 to go and build out this epic in entirety. Um, and that's our, our estimate that we can go and get approval from the business 
um, to, to get that money so that we can go and start to work on this, right? Um, and behind the scenes, there's workflows here, so we can you know, move things through different states as we go through the process. Later on, after we actually start to execute on the project, we can start to track other things like, say, my forecast. <laughs> and there's a little copy button in here that makes it really easy to copy your budget over. And then as things change, as you go, actually, uh, it looks like I'm going to need another, you know, some extra money for some extra software licenses or whatever it might be. I can update my forecast as the epic is actually, you know, in progress, um, and as we're doing releases on it, and um, you know, update it so the business has a better idea of now what I think it's going to be as we get closer. And then after that, we can even start to. Um, get actuals. Those could be manually keyed in here or what a lot of customers choose to do is integrate with their financial system, whether that's SAP, whether that's PeopleSoft, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We have connectors to many different large ERP financial systems um, where we can then import these actuals in so that Scrum Masters, product owners, and just management as a whole can get better, you know, more real-time visibility into those costs as they're adding up comparatively to what we initially budgeted to make sure we're still on track from a financial perspective. And so traditionally in Azure DevOps, um, you know, there are some things you can do to start tracking, you know, at a very high level budgets and actuals and such by putting some fields in there, um, but not anything to this measure where you can go time phase and break things out into different categories. Maybe I need to capitalize expenses. So I, you can see here I'm tracking CapEx versus OpEx, um, you know, things that the business finance accounting, you know, laws require us to track. Um, there's also uh, an analyzer built into here, so if I wanted to then, say, compare my budget to my forecast or my budget to my actuals, I can select which one I want to do there. Um, and then you'll see if there are issues in certain areas where my forecast, in this case, is exceeding my budget, it will highlight those in red for me and show me where the problems are. And I can do the same thing with my budgets versus my actuals if I choose to do so as well and see where my actuals exceed my budget, so on and so forth as well as if you want to show a variance in there, I can show a value, variance in either a value, um, you know, the actual difference between those, and I'll go ahead and do that, or a percent. So now I can see how far I'm off. Looks like about $4,000 is what I'm over, and that's why it's showing up red. So some nice features built into this, and there's a full set of reports behind this, and we'll see that a little bit later. So what we've now done is we've put in a high-level resource plan and a high-level financial plan. And so kind of switching views uh, here and switching roles too. Um, now as more of a manager, if I wanted to come in and I wanted to look across um, you know, my portfolio or a program or multiple programs of different epics that are all rolling up, um, we have more roadmappy types of views where you can come and do that. So what this is showing me here is a list of all the different epics we have going on, some high-level information here. Um, we can also use this to start doing prioritization at this point if we choose to do so by including metrics like what's my high-level swag. Uh, if you're using things like WSJF, weighted shortest job first to do prioritization, um, you can include those in there and or other more traditional metrics. We could include if we wanted ROIs, NPVs, IRRs, you know, whatever it might be. And if I drag this guy over to the side, you'll see I'm starting to build out my roadmap here. Here are the times where I'm thinking these things are gonna happen. But I can go and I can start to make adjustments based off of our constraints. We only have so much money, we only have so much resources, so maybe um, you know, some things need to be adjusted to account for that. And so uh, right here within this view, I can come in and I can pull up a pivot chart here um, looking at costs. And this is totaling up across all these epics, my budgets, my forecasts, my actuals. And there's many different ways I can show this. And I can look at it at varying levels of details if I choose to do so. Maybe I want to break this down a little further. Um, you know, I can come in and select that here. Um, and so that's from the cost perspective, kind of rolling up and looking across all of it. But I can also look at it more from a resource perspective, see, you know, who's working on what, where my over allocations are, whatever it might be, where my problems are, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and then come in and, you know, make adjustments to my roadmap over here by dragging, dropping, moving things out, going, hey, what if we do this project? What if we don't do that project? And start to do some prioritization in here if we choose to do so as well. Um, oh. Wrong one. There we go. So um, from there, let's assume that, okay, we've laid out our roadmap. Um, we've approved those budgets and those resource plans. We figured out which teams are going to work on, you know, which projects. 
Um, more from a resource manager's perspective, I'm really only cared about the resourcing side of things. Sometimes, you know, you have dedicated resource managers. In other organizations, this may be more of a team, I'm sorry, a department manager or someone like that who kind of sits above a set of multiple different teams and needs to see where they're at, where they're scheduled to be, and resolve any, you know, issues. And so what you can see here is um, there are some issues within different periods of time, and if I expand into one of these teams, it will show me why. So it's showing me, hey, team three is being asked to work on these three different epics within this particular period of time, and there's some overlaps here which are causing the overages. So then what we can do is start to drag and drop and move things around and figure out how we can get rid of these reds. Or maybe there's another team that doesn't, you know, that has availability, we can, you know, drag and drop these epics down to another team that does have the skill set and has the availability. And so we can utilize this window here to make those types of adjustments from a resource management perspective. Um, you know, there's kind of two things here. There's time and then there's, you know, um, the amount of resources we have. We can either add resources or we can push things out over time, I mean, depending on what we're comfortable with from a business perspective, right? Um, Later on then, you know, once you've done that high level top down planning, everything has been very top down. At this point, we haven't necessarily yet broken things down into features or user stories, task bugs or any of that. But once it's been approved, at least at a high level or at whatever point in your process, it makes sense. Just like always, you can start to break those epics down into features, break those down into different user stories, into tasks, into bugs, you know, all the detail work at the level of now which the team is gonna come in, start getting assigned to these items, picking up these items, using the Kanban boards that, you know, Jose talked about, and I can come in and poke into one, um, to be able to update status on these items and really start to go at it more at an execution level. Now we're actually starting to work on this, so I can update status and I can track all the details. And there are some resource capacity uh, features built natively into Azure DevOps, but they're more meant for this execution level. They're not meant to do top-down planning at a high level like we were showing earlier on. Um, from there, if your organization requires it, which many organizations do, um, on that work that people are working on, those user stories, task bugs, et cetera, uh, we can come in and we can track time at different levels of detail, depending on you know, how much detail you want, higher level, lower level. Um, and we have a, a timesheet module that you can come in and fill in your time um, you know, for any of these different items that you might be working on here in Azure DevOps without having to leave and go somewhere else. If necessary, we can then integrate that timesheet data into other systems, like say financial systems if needed as well. Um, at the end of the day, as the, these you know, epics are going on um, and releases and sprints are happening and you're executing and all of this, um, you know, management and others need to get reports and metrics around you know, how we're doing. Are we doing well? Are we not doing well? Are we making progress? Are we not? And so, um, we have some templatized reports, and what we're looking at now is Power BI. Power BI allows you um, to you know, create some really, really robust reports and has a lot of nice features built in, and I'll show a subset of those today. We've had other webinars in the past that focus directly on Power BI. But we have some templatized reports here that you can start from, as well as uh, if there's specific things you're looking to do, we can tweak these and or build you new custom reports. We also offer training on Power BI, so you can learn to, to do this yourself if you don't already have skill set in-house. Um, but what we're looking at here is really what we call our safe portfolio or lean portfolio dashboard. And so we can track at a higher level as well as at a more detailed level. This here is all at a very high level. We're looking at different um, portfolios and or we could do this at the program level or the epic level if we chose to do so. This here is a very high kind of portfolio level. And we can do things like scorecards. How are we doing? And you'll see there's a lot of lean metrics in here as recommended by SAFE and other um, you know, frameworks. Um, but you can see things like uh, feature cycle time, but that is the amount of days it takes from a feature to go in as an idea until getting it completed and out to production. The higher that is, um, you know, the less happy we are. We want to be able to get that out as quickly as possible. How can we update our value stream to, to make things more efficient so we can get things out quicker and get value quicker? And we can track that as a metric. Net promoter score is a popular one, especially if you're um, building products, whether those are software products or other. Um, you know, we may want to track how our customers are perceiving the things that we're doing, and a net promoter score is a great way to do that. Number of releases. Uh, another way to measure you know, how frequently or how often are we able to get value out the door and therefore get more value into the business, which will hit our bottom line, um, essentially. So the higher number there, the better. Release predictability is a really nice one, uh, an important, useful one, I should say. 
Um, it's we plan to do this much. You know, let's say we plan to do ten things or ten points, or you know, depending on how you're tracking and, and estimating. Um, and let's say we only got eight of them done, or eight of those points done, then my release predictability would be 80%, meaning um, we're only doing 80% of what we think we're going to do up front when we're planning. Maybe we can do a little bit better job so that we can get more predictable. You know, our goal is to get to 100%, where we say we're gonna do this and we actually deliver that. Um, you know, many teams struggle with, you know, doing the things they say they're gonna do when they say they're going to do it. That pushes out roadmaps, that slows down the amount of value coming in, you know, so that can be a very useful metric to track. And then lastly, from more of a quality perspective, defects. Um, always something you know important to monitor and make sure you don't have too many open defects in your, uh, especially if you're building software or products of any type. Cool. And um, lots of different metrics here, and I won't go through all of them today. Um, but from here on this dashboard, you know, this is kind of a high level of things. I can then click into any one of these visuals and I can get more details um, and start to filter down um, and look into, you know, specifically what's going on, um, you know, in multiple different ways. And so I can get more visibility into this and therefore have the information to make better choices, better decisions, um, and without having to do anything manually, right? I'm just putting all the information into the systems. As long as I keep that updated, uh, then all these reports will automatically update and I don't have to spend, you know, multiple hours frequently trying to go build manual reports in Excel, PowerPoint, and other applications. Um, these reports are actually also viewable um, on mobile phones. So you can see here a mobile view of that same dashboard. You can do cool things like I can subscribe to this. So instead of having to come here and look at it every so often, I can have it automatically emailed to me with a picture and a link, and I can pick how frequently I want that. Um, and I can subscribe other people, like say my boss to it if I wanted or needed to do so, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and everything we've looked at so far has been very high level, but we can also get more detailed types of information. So this is actually connecting directly into Azure DevOps itself and showing me at a more detailed level, uh, cumulative flow diagrams of user stories, bug tracking data, um, et cetera, at a much more detailed level. So we can pull that all together, you know, here in one place. <clears throat> Um, from there, I, you know, we showed how you can do resource management as well as cost management, and so there are reports to go with that. So there's a full set here of resource management reports that we can come look across, see things like availability with drill-ins and drill-outs, um, capacity, you know, so on and so forth across these different teams and resources um, that are working on this work. Um, as well as there's a full cost reporting pack. So on those financial um, you know, pieces of data that we were looking at, we can come in and do time-phased cost reports and so on and so forth, um, you know, and look across our full portfolio there and see all the different costs and what's going on and, and um, you, know, all, you know, across all that at different levels. So with that, um, you, you know, you can see how um, we can add some extra capabilities on top of the great capabilities that are already built into Azure DevOps, which um, Jose talked about the boards and the releases and the test management and source code management and so on and so forth. We can add these, you know, agile portfolio management features on top of it. So the business can still get what they need, you know, from a business perspective, financials, resources, time and other. Um, but the agile team still has what they need and can work agilely in different scrum teams or Kanban or whatever it might be to go and execute and get these, um, you know, epics and features and such built out um, in an agile way. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Jose for just a couple more closing slides, um, and then we'll let you guys go for the day. So there you go, Jose. Jose did the, there we go, cool. I can't hear you, Jose, if you're talking.
so to see if we can get that working. If not, um, maybe we'll uh, we'll send you out those slides afterwards. I'm sure. Matthew, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Okay, great. Sorry for that. I, my uh, unmute button wouldn't go off. I had to switch on you. Uh, all right. Okay. So, um, wanted to close out. Just a clarification. Uh, the one plan solution is uh, a an app on top of Azure DevOps. So it is a uh, partner provided app by Wickersoft. So it is in addition to any subscription you might have. And uh, you know we offer the the products uh, you know depending on requirement set. So you know if you also needed to have one connect to bring in all the other solutions, um, we would uh, we would also include that. And again, it's just depending on uh, scope and and you know, what what is that you want to accomplish. Uh, so wanted to close out. So you know in terms of recommendations, if you're doing agile, um, you will be required to do enterprise agile at some point, which is basically rolling up all of the uh, Scrum team work, product work into one portfolio view uh, to see um, top down uh, what is being done. Yeah, this definitely from an SLT standpoint and an enterprise goal and objective um, makes the adoption of, of uh, you know, Scrum Agile much more relevant. And again, it, irrespective of the style that, um, that you have uh, in terms of your methodology. Uh, the the second is and it has to do with this concept of the the methodology you know right now i i we see in customers a lot of what, what i call methodology wars you know folks kind of uh preferring or, or very being very voiceful in terms of the uh what uh, what what style and method of uh, of agile is being practiced um uh, the reality is that um time time to value is what's really important and uh being adaptive and um implementing an approach that is acceptable to the culture and the requirements of your organization is going to be much more valuable than um, you know being uh, a purist and trying to get everyone to uh, you know to follow a specific dogma I mean, there are some very specific things in scrum agile that you have to do in order to uh, be able to do work there's a lot of folks actually that claim to be doing scrum agile when they're actually doing they're not doing pro, uh, scrum agile uh, you know a scrum uh, master actually he can uh, tends to act more like a project manager and product owners never around to accept and close stories. And those are the kind of things that, um, you know, you, you absolutely have to do, but at the same time, you have to be adaptive uh, to the, your, your culture and, and your requirement set. Um, work with other, other enterprise disciplines, you know, in the success stories uh, are the ones that uh, have enterprise agile bringing to the table business architecture, enterprise architecture, IT operations, um, uh, all in one. Um, and, and IT DevOps specifically, which is the last point, you know, that's where the, the most value is. Uh, so that should be your target end state uh, for, um, for enterprise agile, uh, bring them, bringing operations to the table and uh, seeing what, um, what parts of the infrastructure and products can actually go through uh, a true DevOps uh, environment. So, you know, next steps for Agile PPM success, um, we offer assessments in the form of business strategy workshops for a specific uh, area or requirements that you might have. And as I said earlier, you know, our organization is my built around solutions, advising and operations. So I list some of the uh, opportunity areas that where we can work together, uh, whether it's an evaluation of this, the one plan solution for Azure DevOps that you saw to the uh, actual implementation of Azure DevOps, which we can do, um, and training associated with it, um, or an Azure Cloud assessment if you know the DevOps side needs more power by leveraging uh, the Azure Cloud. There's different uh, flavors and approaches on how to do that. On our advisory side, we have uh, a number of Agile PMO offerings, and uh, if you need to, you know, transform your um, your PMO <clears throat> to a more Agile approach. And in terms of operations, our staffing organization is available to uh, provide uh, candidates. We have an Agile training curriculum, and as I said, Azure DevOps training specifically for 
uh, Azure DevOps is available. With that, um, uh, we're getting close to the uh, end of our webinar. I do want to highlight we're going to have a webinar next week, and we're going to take a slightly different approach because next week we're going to talk about how to use one plan for um, enterprise agile portfolio management. And instead of being focused on DevOps, we're going to be connecting multiple tools through our uh, one plan portfolio management solution and our one connect. So, you know, instead of being exclusively for DevOps, here we're bringing, bringing everything into one plan uh, and one connect. Uh, and having multiple tools actually uh, bring that enterprise agile perspective uh, together in a, in a solution. So uh, please uh, register, at least you get the recording uh, and view later uh, the content that we'll have. And with that, uh, thank you very much for giving us your time. Uh, my email is listed in the event you want to contact us with regards to any of the content or uh, support that you might need. And um, I believe we have time for a few questions. So I'll go ahead and address them. Matthew, can you still hear, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Um, yeah, I had a few questions and I was replying to some of them individually. A um, couple here. Um, one was how do you enter actuals for labor? Um, and I showed there was a timesheet module in one plan that uh, works with Azure DevOps. And so that's where you can go and put in the actual hours. Those can then roll up and translate into actual costs in your financial plan as well, labor costs, um, you know, if you choose to use it that way. Not a requirement by any means, but it is a capability that's there uh, if you choose to utilize it. Um, let's see, there was a couple other good ones in here. Um, um, one was, um, uh, you know, what if I'm utilizing, basically, what if I have not just Agile projects, but I also have, um, you know, waterfall projects as well, hybrid projects, et cetera, and I want to view financials and resources across all of that. Um, and actually, uh, Jose and I will be doing a webinar next Thursday that will talk about that, and it will show um, some similar things, but um, in a different way um, with some added on capabilities so that you can do just that. So if you're looking to manage, you know, across programs and portfolios that have both waterfall and hybrid projects, uh, and you want to see kind of the portfolio view across all of that, uh, we have solutions for that as well. Today was more focused on just Agile specifically within Azure DevOps, um, but we definitely can apply the capabilities we saw today to some other scenarios, and we'll, we'll see that next week. Um, those are probably the, the the most relevant ones for the broader audience. Good. Anything else you had, Jose, before we close no. up? Thanks to everyone. And uh, like I said, feel free to make contact if we didn't answer something that you have a uh, specific scenario that you'd like to address. And uh, do register for the for the next webinar so you can see a more uh, broader uh, scenario um, with um, you know multiple tools, multiple approaches. Thanks, uh, thanks everyone, and thanks uh, Matthew for uh, supporting us. Uh, good uh, demonstration, as always. <laughs> no problem. All right, thanks everyone. We'll uh, be in touch, and um, hopefully uh, see you next week. Bye bye.